Today we're going to take a look at painting mountains and in particular three things to kind of think about to make the mountains work. Uh, first one is picking the right value, in particular the right two values, a simple dark and a simple light that best suggests the light. We want to go for extremes here, a good strong dark and strong light because we want to capture that sense of light right away. Don't look for subtleties. And then the second thing is color. And the same thing there, don't look for subtle color change. Pick an overall color in the light and the dark that best suggests the light. And then the third is comparing with the middle ground and foreground. So whatever colors I use, they have to work compared to the colors and values up front. So if I get these darks too dark, compared to these dark, it's, uh, it's not going to work. I won't have any depth, and when you have mountains in the background, you have to have depth. So we take a look at this. These are uh, Teton Mountains. And this is your typical big mountains. They have the rocky area on top, and then the tree area right in here, and then the, in this case, just the foreground after that. So I want to pick values in those two background areas, rocks and trees, Get them the right value, the right color, and the right simplification. You have to simplify it to find those two things, the value and color. Then the comparison of the values and colors in the foreground. And you need to be doing that as you're mixing those values in the mountains so that you're, you know, you have that comparison right away. I want to be thinking about not too dark here because I know these are going to be the darkest. So as we look at this, this has a lot of detail in these rocks too much detail in the trees. So I want to simplify that and pick a color and value that's going to work the best. And color-wise, it is a muted warm gray in the light area. And a blue and an orange, or in this case, uh, to keep it warm, orange and blue, because I want the orange to kind of dominate to keep it warm. So a very muted orange, not a muted blue. The shadow will be the muted blue and that could be blue and orange, or a blue-violet with a little orange. And if your orange is too yellow, a lot of oil brands are, their CAD orange is really a yellow orange to just almost a, just a dark yellow. It'll turn green when you put a, a blue to it, very muted green. So you have to add either a little bit of CAD red light to it, to the orange, to make it slightly more of a, an orange to red orange. Then it's gonna work with the blue. Otherwise, it'll turn green. Cad red light sometimes works well as an orange with the blue as well. So what I want to do here, I made changes. And this is just a simple warm gray, a simple real cool gray. More on the blue side than the light gray is, you know, more orange in it. Or I could do yellow and violet and have a little bit more yellow in it. Now the lights in the background are not quite as warm. As you can see, this looks warmer. This looks a little cooler, but this is still warm compared to the shadow. And that's the key, is you have to be comparing or it's just not going to work. Otherwise you're going to, uh, you're going to be copying and mixing just to match what you see in the photograph and it, and it won't work. So slightly cooler warm gray. This is still a warm gray compared to the shadow, but this is a warmer gray and still warm compared to the shadow. I uh, could probably get that. Well, I did. I hear lighter on the shadows here than here. Then as I come forward in this area, a little bit darker. Here are the green trees, just a simple warmer green, a blue, uh, it's a blue green to stay back in the distance. But again, it's warmer than this or this. There's enough yellow in here that it looks more sunlit than the shadow or the background areas. So. That's that comparison. You have to compare to what's around it. Then value-wise, and I kind of do this early, I'll hit a darker dark of these trees in front and a real strong light sunlit green of these greens in front so that when I put these colors down, I can see where the comparison is. How much darker these darks are, lighter and warmer these lights are. And I really have to pull these forward by getting these sunlit greens really strong. And these greens, sunlit greens, make these background greens look cool, make us, makes them look far away. But these background greens are warmer than the shadow. So again, it's all about comparison. 
And I would also need to crop this just to talk briefly about there's just too much there to paint that's not necessary. So getting rid of that, filling up the screen a bit more. So really compare those background values to the foreground values and compare the light sunlit areas with the shadow areas. Picking that one color, mountains again are going to be more muted, more grayed in the light areas. So a good start on a lot of them is just that blue and orange for the shadow and then orange and blue for the sunlit area.